Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part four of our series on cystic pancreatic lesions, how to optimize detection, diagnosis, and management. And we left off last time spending a lot of time on serous cystadenomas, the range of variability in terms of the lesions, and this time we'll talk about mucinous cystic neoplasms. Now, the thing about mucinous cystic neoplasms, they are also somewhat variable, but it's a different age group typically, and there's some different appearances, so we'll go through those. Typically, these occur in the fourth to fifth decade of life, almost exclusively in females. They're usually in the body and tail of the pancreas, but not always, and serous cystadenomas are usually tail of pancreas, but not always. There's no communication with the pancreatic duct, unlike IPMN, but these lesions can obstruct the pancreatic duct, as we showed with serous as well. Cis and MCN are usually over 2 cm in size and less than 6 cis present, and they contain ovarian type stroma. Key things about them, they often have smooth margins, but they can have a thick wall or an irregular wall or an enhancing wall. Calcifications are not uncommon. The calcifications usually are not central, but they're typically peripheral in location and thick septations or nodularity are suggestive of malignancy. Now, one of the things about mucinous cystic neoplasms is that some people feel that they're all gonna be malignant, and a lot of people feel that way. And to date, if you have an MCN, it's resected. Serous cystadenoma, it's resected if you have symptoms or it's large enough where you may have problems later on. The big thing with MCNs is that it's that malignancy that you worry about. Now, some people now, if the lesions are under 2 cm or if the patient has other risk factors, will closely follow these lesions. But the trend and what has always been the rule is MCNs are resected. Uh, MCNs usually grow in the body or tail of the pancreas. They can be large. Uh, duct dilatation is uncommon. That is pancreatic duct dilatation. MCNs occur as a single round mucin-filled cyst with possible thick internal septations resulting in a unilocular or multilocular mass. Calcification can be seen in 25% of these cases, which is usually the periphery, but not always going to be the periphery. Remember, we mentioned central stellate calcifications are the classic serous cystadenoma appearance, but not always going to be there. MCNs are typically called grandma tumors, right? Or again, the age. MCN with septations. Good example here. You see some thickened wall. You see septations present. Could this be a serous cystadenoma? With serous cystadenomas, you can get oligocystic, we mentioned, or you can have minimal septations, but these septations are thicker. This is a totally different appearance. To me, this is an MCN till proven otherwise. You can see on the cinematic very nicely that the septations are in fact better shown. And again, this lesion will be coming out. You can sample it, but I think most people will probably sample it and then resect it. Some people will go directly to surgery. Another lesion, abdominal pain, great location, 43-year-old female. So age and sex will help here. Again, there's some septations present. And this was an MCN with low-grade dysplasia. Remember, I mentioned before that being able uh, to call dysplasia in IPMNs is hard, unless there's features that really push you to high grade or malignancy. The same thing is true with MCN, but as I mentioned, most people will resect all MCNs. Here you can see the septation, or there's several septations present in that lesion. Just like I mentioned before about the importance of coronal views or 3D views, you often can see the septations better on the coronal than in the axial view, and often on the volume rendered view, be it with cinematic rendering especially, or just routine volume rendering, the septations are better seen. Again, very nice visualization here and here as well. So I try to study these lesions. You can see there's glandular atrophy in the tail. Here's a cinematic rendering showing you the septations better. And again, this lesion will be resected with a distal pancreatectomy. Another patient, same location, 
Septations don't look that much different, though the lesion is larger. There are multiple septations. There's some atrophy of the gland and a mildly dilated pancreatic duct. This was a MCN with low-grade dysplasia. Again, I'm showing you these. Look at the septations. It's not the way cystic lesions look in serous cyst adenoma. This is classic for MCN, and those septations really uh, seal the deal. Nicely shown there. And there it is on volume rendering as well. Another case, now this one's harder. You know, you're talking about a three and a half centimeter lesion or so uh, with it's cystic and there's some soft tissue. It's solid with septations. This could be an IPMN, but because the duct is a little bit prominent and it's a atrophy of the gland. If this was an IPMN, it would be high grade dysplasia. Doesn't have the look of a serous tumor, could be an MCN. This ended up being an MCN, but this lesion is going to be resected with a distal pancreatectomy because of the distal atrophy as well as the glandular septations, nodularity, and thickening, which is also very concerning when you look at the venous phase imaging. Sometimes the septations are better appreciated on venous phase imaging. Sometimes the thickening of the septations and nodularity better seen on venous phase imaging. And so you need to look at both of them very, very carefully. Here it is with the volume rendering. And this was an intermediate grade dysplasia, which was resected. Here's another lesion, tail of pancreas. Now this lesion could be an IPMN, but I don't see a dilated pancreatic duct. I don't see the pancreatic duct at all. It could be a serous cyst adenoma, but that would be really small. Location would be good, but it's really small. But serous got to start somewhere. What about a, a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor? I don't see really any significant wall thickening here or wall enhancement, though maybe there is some wall thickening. With neuroendocrine tumors, which can be a challenge to separate from MCNs, you need to have peripheral enhancement. That's classic. And here we don't really see that peripheral enhancement. But this was a MCN with low-grade dysplasia. If you call this an IPMN and you say, I don't see the pancreatic duct, again, this would need to be worked up. You cannot basically call it definitively an MCN but you can call it in that degree of categories of IPMNs, unlikely to be a serous oligocystic this small. But again, it's a challenging case that needs tissue sampling. Again, here it is very nicely on the volume rendered views as well. And on the volume rendered views, I do get an appearance on the image on your right of what looks like rim enhancement. When I see a cystic lesion like this, with rim enhancement, I am not thinking of MCN as much as I'm thinking about a cystic neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. Another case, cystic lesion tail of pancreas. Could it be an IPMN? I don't see a dilated pancreatic duct. Could it be a serous cyst adenoma? Possibility could be an MCN. I guess I could consider if I look more carefully for any enhancement, could this possibly end up being a neuroendocrine tumor? But again, location, you would look at patient's age and sex. The patient was 45-year-old female. When you look at all of the features of the lesion, that probably will push you closer to MCN, but you're going to have to sample this lesion. And then, in all likelihood, based on its size, this lesion will be resected. So again, you could see some of the challenges in looking at these lesions. Again, low-grade dysplasia but you would have cured this patient from malignancy or the potential for this becoming high-grade dysplasia or cancer by doing a distal pancreatectomy. Another lesion, large tail of pancreas vein calcification. This could be an MCN, but I could surely make a case with the thin septation for a serous cyst adenoma. I'm not thinking IPMN. I'm not thinking neuroendocrine tumor. And this was an MCN, peripheral enhancement, thin septations. We'll go through the lesion a little bit more carefully on the volume rendering. You see the septations a little bit better. So again, the point I made before about looking for septations is critical, but sometimes you're going to see it better. I said that on coronals, you see it better than axials, but on 
uh, volume rendering, you'd see it better than any of the planes or all the planes put together. Just a very nice example showing you the septations. These are thin septations, so perhaps you're not going to worry about high grade dysplasia. But again, based on size, and this is an MCN, this is going to be resected. And again, the comment about septations being shown or seen better on venous face imaging is something that's always very important to remember. The arterial phase on your left, venous on your right. The arterial phase, you may not have enough enhancement present to enhance the septations. While on the venous phase, you absolutely do. So again, a very, very important point. Very nicely shown here as well. Another patient, larger left upper quadrant mass with septations. Could this be a serous cyst adenoma? Could this be an MCN? It's not going to be an IPMN. Well, this ended up being an MCN with high-grade dysplasia. Coming off the body tail region, large, with septations. You can see the septations a little bit better image on your right on the venous map. But again, could I have considered this being a serous cyst adenoma? I don't think so. You can see septations in cirrus, but the way this looks, particularly its irregular borders anteriorly, makes me consider and thickening nodularity. I'm thinking about a MCN, and I'm thinking this needs to be resected because of a high chance of malignancy. And here it is again on the coronal views and the volume rendered views, very nicely showing you the multiple septations, the location coming off the distal body and tail of pancreas, the displacement of adjacent structures, and the fact this was an MCN. Just a really, really nice example. Mass effect in some of the vessels, and so you have collaterals present because of the splenic vein compression and partial occlusion. So again, recognize that we sometimes can be very good at being very specific, but sometimes we're very good at finding the lesion and describing it, but we can only give a differential diagnosis, and then fluid sampling with EUS will be the next logical step. And this lesion, you knew was worrisome size. Wall thickening and septations, putting them all together, you have to be concerned. And this was resected and was high-grade dysplasia. Another one, large cystic lesion with septations, but about 4 o'clock you have nodularity. When you start having nodularity like this, th that makes it very easy because now you're not talking about a serous cyst adenoma. You're probably talking about an MCN. Theoretically, you could put a spen in there perhaps if the patient was 20 years of age. But when I see nodularity like I do here at about 3 and 4 o'clock and the thick septations, to me that means we're dealing with either high-grade dysplasia or malignancy. I would tend to favor malignancy and this patient surely needs a distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy. And this was a high-grade dysplasia in a patient with an MCN. Just a really nice example. And here's another one. Again, you can think about a serous cyst adenoma, large cystic lesion. The septations, the more you look at, aren't quite the septations which we saw in serous cyst adenomas. It can be very challenging. There's mass effect. Obviously, the patient has fullness because of the size of this lesion. But once you start seeing the thickening, the nodularity, you got to be going with a MCN with high-grade dysplasia or malignant. This will be resected. One could argue, do you need to do EUS? Because no matter what the EUS shows, you're probably going to operate. I guess the big thing would be is if you know it's malignant, you'll probably do an aggressive node dissection. If you know it's benign, you're not going to do that. But this was, again, an MCN with high-grade dysplasia. Another patient, cystic lesion off the body of the pancreas with calcification, and it's projected off the gland. Kind of looks a little bit less aggressive, though a great location for the MCN. Um, it's cystic. There's no dilated duct. What do you make of this? Could it be a IPMN? No dilated duct, so I don't like that. Could it be a lymphoepithelial cyst? That's a definite possibility. They have calcified places within them. They also tend to extend off the gland, which this, and does, this does as well. So that would be a good thought. 
You can see the vessels are stretched a bit, but there's no vascular abnormality. So what could this be? An MCN? Maybe. But the way it's hanging off may be less likely. Lymphoepithelial cyst, definite possibility. And this was an MCN. Lymphoepithelial cysts don't have calcification. That's one helpful feature. But this is a good example of an MCN with calcification being at the edge of the lesion and the lesion being perfectly homogeneous and the lesion basically being exophytic. Or this example, cystic lesion, I'm not sure if this is from the adrenal, the pancreas, the stomach, or the spleen or retroperitoneal. When you look at it, it's really, after you look and spend a lot of time looking, it's part of the pancreas. So now I have a 19-year-old with a cystic lesion in the tail of the pancreas, no pancreatitis, so it's not a pseudocyst. Could it be a serous cyst adenoma? Kind of young, but it's possible. Could it be an MCN? Patient's young. It's possible. Again, I would have to worry about a spend tumor. Those are typically in teenagers and people in their 20s. They can be cystic and solid with the main component solid, but they can be cystic as well. Maybe this is a spend tumor. That's a good possibility. Here it is here again. And again, really cystic as you look at the volume rendering. And here's a little bit more information from the cinematic rendering with the septations present. This lesion was removed because no one knew what to expect. They did do EUS first and then did a distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy. And this was an MCN in a 19-year-old female. Now that's exceedingly uncommon, MCNs, patients 40 and 50. But I do want to make the point that when you do a differential diagnosis, some things are more likely, but it doesn't exclude others. So MCNs can be a 19-year-olds or 69-year-olds. It doesn't matter. It can be in female, or it can, which it usually is, but it can also be in male. So let's now, we've now looked at pancreatic pseudocysts. We've looked at IPMNs. We've discussed MCNs. We've talked about serous cyst adenoma. Let's look at neuroendocrine tumors and see how they can be challenging when you have cystic neuroendocrine tumors. So let's take a break and come back and pick up again. See you soon. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.